December 5th, 2006. I was sitting in my bedroom. I was bored, and yet still in shock after what happened a week ago with Edeled. Christmas was coming, and I was tired of playing as Edeled in all the games I played. I actually managed to find out about the guest players, but whenever I tried to play as them, they would just reload as Edeled. I tried asking my dad for a new Wii so I can start over, but he doesn't acknowledge Edeled's existence, and doesn't believe me about the whole fiasco. But anyway, I heard the doorbell ring. I ran to the window and saw my best friend Nathan waiting outside the door. I ran to the door and let him in. Hey Kyle, he said happily. Hey, I replied. We talked for a bit as we went upstairs, and just as I thought, he found the Wii. Whoa, dude, you have a Wii? Nathan said with excitement. Why didn't you tell me? He continued. Well, uh, Nathan, you see, before I could finish, Nathan grabbed a Wii remote and said, It's fine, dude. Let's play, as he gave me a Wii remote. I reluctantly turned the Wii on, and I took a glance at Nathan's face, and he was clearly very excited. The Wii menu came on screen, and I became nervous when Nathan pointed the Wii remote to the Mii channel. Hey, Kyle, uh, is that the Mii channel? I heard it's really cool, Nathan asked. Y yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's really cool, I stuttered. Nathan clicked on the Me channel and I tried my best to think up of an excuse to not go on the Me channel. But before I could come up with one, Nathan pressed start. What was weird was that I expected the dialogue box saying we deleted you to appear, but to my surprise, it actually led us into the Me channel. But when we got into the Me channel, it was very, very glitchy. Textures were in the wrong places, and the music was very, very low quality. I looked at Nathan, and needless to say, his excitement was replaced by pure confusion. He looked back at me. Uh, Kyle? Uh, do you know what's happening here? He asked. Before I could start explaining, I heard a very loud grinding noise. We turned back to the TV and saw Edelette standing in the middle of the Me channel. My eyes widened in fear. Edelette just stood there for a while though, just staring at us. Edelette looked at me again. Uh, Kyle, what's going on here? He said as I looked back at him. I have to close the Me channel, I replied. I pointed the Wii Remote at the exit button at the top left of the screen which its textures were all mixed up. Come on, come on, come on. I repeated to myself as I repeatedly clicked on the exit button. But the dialog box to choose if you wanted to leave wasn't coming up. And at this point, I was starting to panic. So did Nathan. While I was desperately trying to close the me channel, Edel had started speaking. Hello, Kyle. Kyle, what's going on? Nathan asked me frightfully. Just calm down, sit down, and I'll, and I'll explain it to you later. Just let me handle it, okay? Nathan sat down on the couch, and just when he did, Edelette spoke out again. Didn't you know that your me is coming to visit? What are you talking about? I asked. The me you created. He should be here at any moment. Immediately after Edelette said that, my me came. He fell from the top of the screen and landed on the ground of the me channel, and Edelette disappeared. I was happy to see my me again, but when he got up, I was shocked. He looked extremely pale, and he was covered in blood and stains and he was wobbling, as if he was struggling to keep his balance. And I could have sworn that I heard my me whisper, help me. I backed away from the screen, and Nathan was literally shivering. I made another attempt to close the me channel, and Edelette appeared. Leaving so soon, Kyle? You haven't even got to see your me up close yet. 
Adelaide said in a sinister tone. The camera then zoomed in onto my me, and when it was fully zoomed in, I saw my me crying as he was struggling to stand. I felt bad for him, but after a couple seconds, Adelaide walked on screen with an axe. He walked over to my me and pushed him over. My me fell on the ground and cried even more. Adelaide put his foot on my me to restrain him. You get away from him! I yelled. Adelaide looked at me and said, Well, I'll get away from him, which he's dealt with. Adelaide said as he looked back at my me, who was crying and out of breath from squirming. Adelaide raised his axe and swung it at my me's legs, chopping them off. And while there was no blood, I did see red stains in the areas in which Adelaide chopped off my me's legs. But I could still tell that my me was still in intense pain, and he was squirming for dear life. Adelaide then raised his axe again and paused for a moment. I looked back at Nathan, and I will never forget the fear I saw on his face. Every inch of fear was visible on Nathan's face. I never saw him so horrified. I eventually told him to go to my room so that he wouldn't have to see anything that would happen next. He nodded his head and ran to my bedroom and shut the door. I turned back to the TV and Edelette swung the axe at my me's neck, decapitating him. And there was still no blood. However, I still did see red stains on my me's neck and head. I was done at this point. I ran to the Wii and repeatedly pressed the power button, but it didn't work. I tried again and again and again, until I saw the screen go to static. But as time went by, I saw my me's decapitated head slowly fade into the screen. Immediately, I went back to trying to shut off the Wii. But I still couldn't shut off the Wii by using the power button. So, I unplugged the Wii. I took the Wii, Wii remotes, and cords and ran to my room. I swung the door open and threw the Wii into the closet. I looked at Nathan, who was sitting on my bed and still in shock after everything that has happened today. Is... is it over? Nathan asked quietly. Yeah, it's over, I replied while breathing heavily. I think you should go home, Nathan, I continued. Alright, see you later, Nathan replied as he left the room. After Nathan left, I went back to the living room to see the static is still on the TV. But after a couple seconds, the static was replaced with a black background with white text saying, this is not over, and then the TV turned off.